have I really never made a video on Arlen? I, I went through my channel and it doesn't look like it, but I, I swear I did. It's so weird. I think once you start making like a ton of Tower of God content, it all starts to blur. Arlen Grace is one of the most important characters in Tower of God, not just in the story, but in the overall lore of the entire world of Tower of God. Arlen is obviously Bomb's mother, but she's so much more than that. She was one of the original 13 people who entered the tower as companions and climbed it all together. She's obviously the wife of V, and one of the reasons why just everything in Tower of God happened. Without Arlen, we wouldn't have Tower of God. So some basic information about Arlen. We don't know her exact position in the tower, but we do know that she was a sorcerer. She used spells, which I find very interesting because you don't find many people who can just use spells, especially that early on. Like she was able to use spells as one of the original people who entered the tower, which makes me wonder, did she have knowledge before entering? Like somehow maybe she, she studied up on some books or something and she's able to use spells. I'm not really sure, or maybe the tower, she just discovered something in the tower that made her use spells. But one way or another, that's the only like combat thing we know about her. And I think this makes a lot of sense because we know that she was able to, as I'll talk about in a minute, preserve Bomb's body. And to preserve Bomb's body, she probably needed to know some sort of spell. And a lot of the things in the story only make sense if she does know spells. Just as a reminder, spells are not Shinsu. It's, it's not the same thing. Shinsu is using the tower's basically energy source to, to perform magic-like things, but spells are like an entirely different thing. It's not Shinsu. It's implied that she had the same color eyes as Bomb because Jihad recognizes Bomb as from his eyes. You have the same eyes as Arlen. Now you could argue, okay, they just look similar, but not the color. It's very heavily implied that she had those same golden eyes. So basically, Arlen entered the tower with the other 12 companions, and while they were climbing, she fell in love with V. Now what's interesting here is that V was the name that Arlen called him. His name was not actually V. Now there's some theories about his name that I'll get into in a minute, but you know, that's what she called him. It was her affectionate name for this, this guy that she fell in love with. So we'll call him V, obviously, that's all we know him by. And basically, once they climbed the entire tower, Jihad made a decision to stop climbing on the 134th floor. No one's climbed the entire tower as far as we know. It's unexplored territory. So Jihad stopped climbing and basically made this key. And the only way you could get the key is by collecting his rings and collecting the 13 months and you can combine them and make the key. Basically, he did not want people to climb. He eventually settled down as a monarch, as the king of the tower, made a bunch of deals with the administrators and you know, that's it. But V and Arlen, they wanted to keep climbing. We don't know why they wanted to keep climbing. Maybe they were just adventurous or maybe they wanted something deeper. You know, maybe there was a deeper reason that they wanted to keep climbing, but they heavily disagreed with this decision and basically this caused a giant rift between them. In addition to one other thing, Jihad was madly in love with Arlen, like madly in love. And there's a lot of, you know, fan art out there of the two of them. Like perhaps the story we know of Arlen isn't entirely true. Maybe she did love Jihad. I don't think she did. You know, it's pretty clear that she loved V. However, I could imagine that perhaps they were close. Maybe they were really good friends, you know, and Jihad, wanted more out of her. He 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 didn't want her as just a friend, you know, all that stuff. You, you know the the trope and, and she didn't she didn't see him the same way. So I I could see that being the case. But I think it's pretty clear that she loved V. Jod proposed though. He he went down on one knee and she said no, which is pretty awkward and they ran away. V and Arlen ran away because Jihad, you know, wasn't too happy about that. And they basically, you know, they created this organization to oppose Jihad because, again, they didn't agree with this decision. They didn't agree with him becoming king. They, there was so much they didn't agree with. And this organization eventually became fucked. There was a giant civil war. This is not the same war as like the Hidden Grove. The Hidden Grove was a part of. This is not the same thing. You know, that was during the Age of Genesis. This is still not the Age of Genesis yet. But there was a civil war and Jihad and the 10 great warriors fought against V and Arlen and their organization and you know V and Arlen lost I mean they lost they were up against the mightiest powerhouses of the tower and something tells me they knew they were gonna lose but at the same time like they were standing for their ideals and eventually Arlen had a child and Jihad was not too happy about this you know he wanted her to go into hiding he would have let her live he wouldn't have disturbed her anymore but apparently I don't know the Civil War having a child he basically cracked 
and he found her and right in front of her killed that child and of course we know that child was bomb. Arlen was a mess. I mean she tried to kill herself many times but as I've talked about before in my immortality video which you can check out by clicking the card Arlen you know made the immortality contract. She cannot die so she could not kill herself. However V was the only one of the group aside from blood matter who was a special case which I talk about he did not make the contract and so he thinks that for some reason it'll help her if he kills himself and so V kills himself. He's like, you know what? This is just the thing to make my wife feel better for sure. Basically says, go back to your companions, forget about everything that happened, you'll feel better. Well, Arlen didn't feel better, go figure, and she became even more bitter and her hate, she had started to hate Jihad even more and more and more. And she eventually found a way to exit the tower. She exits the tower, finds the outside god of the tower somehow, and she offers Bomb to this outside god who resurrects Bomb. And basically she places all her trust and hope in Bomb to be the savior of the tower, to basically enact revenge for them all and take down this evil that is sitting at the top. And that's essentially Arlen's story. However, there's a lot more going on that I need to talk about. Basically this entire ending sequence where she offers Bomb to the outside god it's essentially a giant prophecy. It sets up the entire story as we know. Like everything else that happened in the tower is leading up to Bomb because this prophecy is that God's messenger will leave a weapon for this child to use to take revenge on everyone's suffering and essentially lead the people of the tower to greater heights. And this obviously messenger is Enryu. We know he is an, a messenger of the outside God. And what did he leave behind? He left behind a thorn for Bomb to use to slay the king's throat, right? We've always heard that, and it's a prophecy from Arlen, like from this entire period where she offered Bomb outside. It's crazy in and of itself that she was able to exit the tower. I mean, that's in and of itself absolutely insane because, you know, people have been searching for a way to exit for a long time and no one else, as far as we know, has been able to. Gustang has been researching ways to exit the tower. We know that like Yurik has entered the tower, obviously, and, and a bunch of other irregulars, or a few other irregulars, and Gustang's asked them, you know, things. But Arlen, as far as we know, is the only one who actually found a way out, which is so interesting. And we do know that Arlen, even today, like has people who respect her and who, who see her as this sort of, you know, one of the gods of the tower, right? One of the 13. And we see this in a few examples, okay? So on the floor of death, that was actually where Bomb was born. V and Arlen used to live on the 43rd floor. Now this is probably before it was called the floor of death, because obviously the entire fiasco with Enryu hadn't happened yet. But the whole thing with Enryu happened because of Arlen. Well, not directly, right? Basically, they're, the people who lived there were still, you know, like worshippers, quote unquote, of Arlen, and they built this altar, you know, they, they highly respected Arlen's name. But Jahad tried to erase the existence of Arlen, and so him and his followers essentially, like, quote unquote, desecrated the land, and this angered Enryu, the messenger of the gods. So Enryu comes and th he basically starts wiping out people on the floor. He takes out the guardian and he's pissed off. We didn't know why he did this originally, but he now we know like from, from learning information that he did this because of Arlen, which basically means Arlen had a bunch of simps. I mean, that's essentially what I'm getting at here. You got Jihad, the freaking king of the tower. You've got V, Bomb's father, and Enryu, the second strongest being in Tower of God, messenger of the outside god. All of them somehow simps for Arlen. She must have been beautiful. Another obvious example is the remnants of a giant statue on the 28th floor. We see this hand, which the Devil's Right Arm arc takes place surrounding and inside of, right? And this hand, is, is, you know, believed to be Arlen's hand, a statue of Arlen, Arlen that used to exist there. Now you may say, but Joe, how do we know that this statue was of Arlen? It was called the, it's called the hand of Arlen. This is a cool detail because this was way before we knew who Arlen Grace was. We never knew. We heard of the hand of Arlen, but then we later find out Arlen Grace is this really important figure in Bomb's mother and like there's so much going on here it's so cool. So somehow like Jahad didn't realize that he'd left that there was a piece of Arlen that was left behind, you know, which is really interesting that he not not necessarily I mean maybe he didn't forget but he thought he destroyed it and people there were still calling it the hand of Arlen though. 
I don't know, somehow that slipped by him for thousands of years. And another thing I want to talk about here is the the name of Bomb, because the name Bomb, right, is a name given to Bomb by Rachel. Now, this ties in Rachel into all of this. Rachel is someone who says she knew Arlen, and we don't know how, right? We, we, it's implied that she knew Arlen, because there's a time, there's a panel where she's thinking, Arlen, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. I'm going to, I'm the savior in the prophecy, not bomb, blah, blah, blah. It's almost like she's talking directly to Arlen. So A, either she found Arlen's pocket, like Garam, or B, she knew Arlen personally. And I think it's implied she knew her personally because if Bomb was resurrected, then perhaps Arlen placed Bomb in the care of Rachel in that cave. Perhaps Rachel was someone that Arlen saved at one time and is maybe like a maid, was a maid to Arlen because we know that Rachel is really good at folding clothes and Wang Nan points this out. She's really good at like keeping things tidy. And so perhaps Arlen placed Bomb into Rachel's care, which was a huge mistake, but whatever, you know, um, and yeah, something like that. But okay, so that's the whole Rachel thing. You can hear more about Rachel in the video I did on Rachel, the Tower of God lore on Rachel. But essentially, this name that she's given, that he's given, was from Rachel. Rachel named him Bomb. The 25th Bomb is supposed to come from like his birthday or whatever. But essentially, Bomb was the name that Rachel gave to him. Now, so what was Bomb's true name? That's the real question here. What is the true name of Bomb? I think the true name of Bomb, and I think that this is not even really, really me, this is almost 100% confirmed, is Juvial Grace. The name that Fug gave Bomb was actually his true original name. Now, why do we think this? There are a bunch of reasons, but the main reason is the way the name is structured. Haku of the Tubes made a fantastic video breaking this down, which you can check out here. Highly recommend it, but I'll essentially get to the nitty gritty here. Basically, Juvial Grace, this name that has three words. In Tower of God, when we see a character that has three names, typically the first name is from the father's family, and then the third name is from the mother's family, which means that middle name is essentially your actual name. This is why Juvial Grace, he's called Viol, right? He's not called Ju or Grace, he's called Viol, with Grace Mershea Luzlek. You know, he's called Mershea. Some people call him Luzlek, but like his name is Mershea. Pobedao Liboric Kun. His name is Liboric. You know, Pobedao would be the father's name and Kun would be the mother's name. And, and you know, you can look at like the different names in Tower of God and figure out this, this is the name structure. Okay, so let's look at Juvial Grace. Obviously, Grace is Arlen Grace. It's referencing Arlen Grace. Grace is Arlen's family name. So Juvial Grace, that third name comes from his mother. That fits the formula, right, of that third name being from the mother, which would mean that that first name, Ju, would be the family name of his father. Now, remember how I mentioned V was just an affectionate name given to this guy. His real name could have easily been, and I think it was, Viol. So his name was Ju Viol. And perhaps Arlen named her child Juvial Grace because he's the one who's going to do what they failed to do. He's going to take down Jihad, lead the people of the tower to greater heights, you know, and basically be the hero that they needed at that time. And so she's going to give him her, her name and her husband's name. And, you know, it makes sense. I think it makes perfect sense. And of course, Bug wants Bomb to do the exact same thing. And so they're going to give him that same exact name, that true name of this child. Now, how did Fug know this name, you could ask? Well, there's actually someone, the leader of Fug, who was a subordinate of V, the leader of Fug, Grace Mershea Luzlek, who could have easily known this because this guy's name is Grace Mershea Luzlek. Arlen Grace, Grace Mershea Luzlek. Is it a coincidence? I think not. By the way, I made a whole video on Luzlek, which you can check out here by clicking the card. But basically, you know, if we go by this naming structure, Grace Mershea Luzlek, Grace could be from his father's family. So perhaps Arlen and Luzlek are related, or maybe he took on that name as sort of 
some some sort of like honorable thing, almost like adopted into the family. I'm not really sure if that makes sense, but one way or another, they are connected. And perhaps while she was searching for an exit, she was working with Luzlak and in communication with Luzlak, and he knew this child's name. I don't know. I think it makes perfect sense for Bomb to have his father's name. I mean, what are the odds that his name is Viol? and his dad's name is V, you know? And like, there's this name, Ju V, Ju Viol. Like, it, it has to be, right? It's the only thing that makes sense. But overall, that is most of what we know about Arlen. I mean, she's a character that's never shown up, but like I said, there is so much lore surrounding her. I'm sure I missed a bunch of things as well, but that's sort of the main thing. You know, that, that's the main information we have on Arlen. We know the Bell of Dawn that Garam uses on the Floor of Death once belongs to Arlen, so that's kind of cool. You know, and she obviously had a pocket that she used while climbing, and that was left behind. Like, the last thing that I'll say is that she, she could... There's information that is inconsistent, right? Or not inconsistent, but we know that Garam is not telling the full story. She says this once Bomb leaves, she's not ready to hear everything. Perhaps Arlen went a little bit insane and everything in her diary is not 100% true. Perhaps V is still alive. Perhaps the whole relationship with Jihad was not what it, what it seems like from the pocket, right? There could be more going on, which could make Jihad a more sympathetic character. It could make V a more sympathetic character. I'm not really sure. We have to keep that in mind. This is from the information that we were given. So I'm, I'm working with that as much as I can. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more Tower of God content, mostly daily, you know, webtoon, Tower of God, got a high school content, which is, you know, hopefully you're enjoying that. And we have a Discord server down below as well, where you can hang out. We like to play games there sometimes. And a Patreon down below as well. Huge shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. We've had a lot of new support lately, which is awesome. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for all of the, the support you've been giving me over the past few months and years that I've been doing this. It means a lot and I couldn't do this without you. Let me know what other kinds of Tower of God lore you want me to cover on the channel. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God lore video. Take care.